Hello. This project is nearing its end. I just added the last of the superconductive equipment, and now it is time to basically call the game feature complete. Uh, this game was never intended to be sold for money or anything like that. It's just a, a little game to take up an afternoon and maybe get you interested in particle acceleration. Um, because of that, I'm not sure how much polishing I'm actually going to do. At this point, you can call the game feature complete. You can call the game ready to play. Um, I may add a level or two, I may polish the interface. If Unity releases a new version that doesn't crash on Linux and Mac, I'll be recompiling it for those platforms, but the game is basically complete at this point, you should go play it. If you want to listen to me talk at great length about how to beat the last level, that's what I'm going to be doing at the rest of the episode. So the target is one tera electron volt, and that is going to be uh, a very, very long process, which is why this is uh, going to be a very, very long walkthrough. However, it should be a very straightforward process if you've played the game. Uh, I'm just going to be walking you through each step, so you should really only watch this if you get stuck or if you really like the sound of my voice. You can no longer front load your quadrupole magnets or your uh, vacuum chambers because uh, you can't get your deviation or your vacuum below zero. It just doesn't work. So that's no longer viable. But you can still bring out all of the various kinds of energy that you're going to need. And that means lots of radiation and lots of electricity. We're going to blitz through our nitrogen segment. This is what I'm kind of nicknaming the low energy levels. Um, the idea is that we, this is where we use all of our nitrogen coolant. We're not going to need any more nitrogen coolant once we're, once we're through this and into the giga electron volt range. So two of these single chambers in a row is enough for us to bring in this double chamber, but we do have to make sure that the pipes are in the right spot. And we burned off one of our lines of liquid nitrogen. That's fine, we've got two, and we're only going to need like one and a little bit. Now we're burned through all of our liquid nitrogen phase, and it's time for our superconductive phase. The superconductive phase, we don't need any more liquid nitrogen. The superconductive phase requires deviation data, and we don't have anything that can provide that, so we're going to need to get ourselves a sensor patch, sensor kit, just so that we can have deviation data. And this will also give us enough room to massage our pipes into the right order. Here we are. Just pull down some waveguides and... Grind, 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 grind. You notice that these chain quite nicely, deviation data in, deviation data out. But we do have to make sure to pull a power cable out, and then put the power cable back on, just to make sure that it all ends up working out in the long run. There we go. So now we are basically out of all of our resources and we don't need this. We are basically out of all of the resources that we had from the very beginning, and it is time for us to do some beam maintenance. You can see that our vacuum is 10E16 and our deviation is 10E13. That's fairly high, so we're going to go ahead and bring that under control before we move on. So the most annoying thing is the quadruple. It actually requires uh, data from a lot of weird places. So, well, that's not what I wanted. Actually, that's not a bad idea, but it's not what I wanted. I wanted the sensor rig. So I happen to know how far the quadruple will pull data from, and so I'm going to go ahead and place one right here. If we bring this throttle, you can see that the deviation is 10E13. We don't need minus 30 deviation. Minus 18 is actually a little too much, but minus 6 isn't anywhere near enough. So this is the good place for it. And you can see it wants deviation data from pipe minus 1 and MEV data from pipe minus 4. So the deviation data from this pipe here. And 1, 2, 3, 4. MEV data from this pipe here.
Now, if you take a look, it requires a red pipe, a red plug as its first thing. We don't have any in the right spot, but we do have some that are pretty close. So, in our space, we can massage our uh, our pipes here, our, our cords here, until we are properly done. And then we need to just massage all of this stuff back into working, because we just unplugged everything. Oh, we don't want that. There we are. Um, and then we can just... You know, I think this is one too many pi power cords. I like to keep things simple, and I notice there's an extra yellow power cord floating around in the ceiling, so um, we don't need it. We're going to just go ahead and get rid of it right at the source. There we go. I guess what we wanted to do is pull it and then exchange it. There we go. Power deviation, power, power, deviation, power. That's, did I get the right, I need the dark blue one from over here. Yeah, I got it right, I just said it wrong. All right, so now we have this red cord. Pop it back up to the top and then plug everything in. I really don't need you. There we go. So this quadrupole magnet has brought our deviation down to zero. How nice. So what can we do with the rest of this? Well, we actually have a lot of options as to how we want to handle this. And it all comes down to whether or not we care about efficiency. And we really don't. Um, but there is a lot of space here. We might as well put something in here. And the best thing we have to put in here is a cold trap. So the cold trap, you can see it takes in uh, vacuum data. Well, here's our vacuum data. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop the yellow cable off and then put the yellow cable right back up. And that brings our vacuum down to 10E2, which is fine. It's decent enough. Gotta plug everything back in after you do something like that. Oh. Including the coolant. There we go. Now that is just about as hot as helium can get, so let's do a little bit of line maintenance and bring that under control. We're going to be using a helium cooler. Helium fridge. It requires a red power cable and heat data. Where can we find some heat data? Well, as it turns out, there's plenty of heat data from right here. And if we put that up on the stack, we're going to have to really work at trying to get it to work. So that's not a very good place to get your heat data from. This is not heat data. This is energy data. So it looks like we are going to have to extend this with a sensor rig just to pull out some heat data. But I do need to have some yellow power cables. So that means that we've got to do a lot of dancing around here. Let's, uh, let's put in our heavy cabinet here, put in our power cables here, um, and we'll pull these guys up. Sensor cabinet. This is why you front load all the resources you can, because it's a balancing act between having a lot of annoying stuff on the stack and uh, not having to inter interfere with your, your cords by doing this stuff. So we need to have some, was it heat data, I believe? And then we will be pulling out the power and then exchanging the power for a red cable. And then we will be putting in a helium fridge. Oh, it's just backwards now, isn't it? Uh, so we actually want to um, pull this, uh, exchange it, yeah, exchange, and then pull, and then pop. And that'll bring our helium back under control. But you can see the damage that we've done to our GEV. We've dropped down to 25 GEV, which isn't really very good. You notice that our vacuum dropped a little bit, and that's because this actually reduces vacuum. Not nearly as much as the proper uh, cold trap does, though. So Now it's time for us to get ourselves going a little bit, and that means that we are going to need to... Um, we are going to need to pull in some more resources. We're going to need about that many waveguides, and uh, I think that'll be enough power. Let's give it a shot. So we have our double SC RFC. These are the most powerful units in the game, and we're definitely not ready to use one. But if we bring it down, we can see that the minimum is 33 
and we're at 24. So if we use one of these smaller devices, we might be able to bring it into play. We just need to make sure that we have deviation data from somewhere, like, say, here. But that does look like it's going to be a really complicated mess. So let's not do that. Let's go ahead and pull out an entirely new uh, deviation data source. We're taking a very relaxed approach here. We're not trying to cram this in as densely as possible. Um, you are free to find a more perfect solution. There are plenty of better solutions than this. Now, obviously, we're going to want to bring our coolant online. All right, so we're going just a little bit too slow for that, but that's OK. And I just lost my real-time shadows because I've went for too long. Real-time shadows turn themselves off if your computer slows down too much, and it looks like the length of this pipe and the recording software has finally combined into just being a little too much. So the double chamber also requires a deviation information, fortunately. We can get some from the single chamber. But we do have to swap around one of these yellow cables. Nope, sorry, wrong way. That's not going to work out very well now, is it? All right. To keep it simple, let's go ahead and just extend this and then put in our double chamber here. And that'll give us enough room to actually play around with all the things we want to play around with. So we want to pop this off and then put it back on. And we also need to pull this out here. Sorry, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, we also want to pull this on and then switch it. Nope, don't no, switch it. Sorry, it looks like it's getting very noisy all of a sudden. And then we want to make sure that this is, in fact, yeah, yeah, we do want to switch it. We want to switch it and then pop it. There we are. And there we are. see our deviation is going up, our uh, energy is going up very, very high. 355. Let's pull down this dude and then bring him back out. And once again, we're going to want to pull this up and then switch it and then pop it. But I don't think that there's going to be enough room for us to put in, no. If I put in another, another one of these there, it's going to overlap with all of that wrangling. So we're going to go ahead and skip another layer. That'll work. Pull this. Pop it. And then pull. Exchange. Pop. And, of course, put in our final double RFC. The helium has gotten too hot. It's actually going to work against us. We, bring, we need to bring this, this uh, down. So let's go ahead and put in a cooling unit here. So this fridge requires some heat data. Oh, would you look at that? We've got heat data right off the top of our heads. Uh, the only problem is that we are going to need to do much better at wrangling our cords. So we are going to want to pull this guy down. And now that's our heat data. We're going to need a power cord, uh, a red power cord. And you can see that there is red power cords galore, but they're all stuck pretty deep in a stack. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop, we're going to exchange, and we're going to pop up. Oh, not quite enough space. We're going to have to actually do this a little bit, uh, a little bit further back in the stack, I think. So if we were to pull this, uh, we can exchange it. No, wait, that's not a really good place to exchange, is it? Because it's supposed to be how it, it's the order it's supposed to be in. It's all very crowded. Well, I think we have enough room. Let's go ahead and just do it. So let's pop. No, sorry, let's exchange. Pull. Exchange. Pop. Pop. 
No, that didn't work out at all. So we're going to exchange, and then we're going to... Oh, I know what I need to do. I'm just doing it too many, too many backwards here. We're going to pull, and then we're going to exchange it. And then we're going to pop, and then we're going to exchange it. Oh, no, wait. That's not going to work either. Sorry, I'm being confused here because there's a lot of noise in the background that it's hard to think. There we are. That's what I wanted to do. All right, now we're back in business. So this blue needs to go here, and then the purple can come down. And then we got the red right where we need it, so that can come down. And then we got the helium coming back out. Looks good. But unfortunately, we are going to have to wrangle this a little bit. And there we are. We're going to need this uh, blue cable to be up there, like this. Need a waveguide. Plug it in. Fridge is so damn hot. Well, if we bring this guy down, I think that'll be okay. So let's put it in a cold trap, because that should be pretty cold. Even without the vacuum data, it's cold enough just due to the cooling going on. So um, that's fine. We'll just use that to bring down the temperature. And you can see that we are now at a tera electron volt and a half thereabout. Which is not so bad. Shall we see what happens when we try and collide? So this is the new super collider and uh, it requires deviation data and heavy power. We got the heavy power all right, but where's our deviation data going to come from? How about here? So we can pull this down. And then we can pop the heavy power back up onto the stack and pull it down. And we are ready to rumble. The beam is too scattered. Oh, oh, oh how scattered is the beam? 10 e 10 That's actually way too scattered. So that means that we do, in fact, need to do a little bit more work. We are going to need to put in another quadrupole. But we don't need a big one, we just need a little one. So if we do, unfortunately that means we're going to need um, more power of every kind. And we're also going to need more waveguides, probably. Well, maybe not. Let's go ahead and just assume we're not going to need more waveguides and we got more sensors. And where is our quadrupole? Here it is. So, we're going to need this red power to be at the top of the stack, but we're also going to need to have uh, the two blues. There we go. 10e4. That should be low enough. So let's put our super collider back in. Oh, we got too much of this power here. All right, there we go. Oh, where's our heavy? We used up the last of our heavy power. Oh, how annoying. All right. All right, we can bring in more heavy power.
There we go. Finally. All right. Yay. Whew. So this was a heck of a long walkthrough. Sorry about that. I'm sure that I fell silent far too much. But this was, uh, this was a level that was very hard for me to build while I was recording myself on camera. And you can see just how long this level is. It's actually long enough that you'll probably run into performance issues. Um, even if I wasn't recording, I have a feeling that I'd be running into performance issues with this level just because of its insane length. And you have to remember, that's a lot of game objects. I don't do very much optimization. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this game. I hope you play it and uh, find it to be just annoying enough to be fun. Have a good day.